Well, praise God and welcome to our program today. And it is indeed a very good Friday for us as, a, as today marks a very special day on the Christian calendar as we remember the Lord Jesus and what he has done for us and we celebrate God's love towards us. So I'd like to encourage you, please, if you can get out your Bibles, get a notebook, get a pen, and uh, we're going to share some communion as well at the end of the program. So get some communion as well. And uh, amen. So if we can just open up in a word of prayer uh, before we go into the word of God this morning. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to, oh Lord God, to reflect upon your word, to read your word, to hear your word. We thank you, oh God, for your son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who gave his life for us at Calvary's cross. Christ, O oh Lord God, is the demonstration of your love towards humanity. And we thank you, O oh Lord God, for redeeming us by the blood of Jesus Christ, your son. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, I pray that you'll anoint my vocal cords. I pray, Lord God, you'll anoint our ears to hear the word of God this morning with clarity and with understanding. And I pray that enlightenment will come in the name of Jesus. In your blessed name, O oh Lord God, most high we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Well, good morning uh, to all of you watching us this morning. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is indeed a very good Friday. If you can turn with me in your Bibles to the book of uh, Romans and the fifth chapter. And I'd like to read from verse number six. The Bible says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That means that there was a specific time ordained and set on God's calendar for Christ to come and save the ungodly from eternal death and eternal damnation goes on in verse 7 to say, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise God. So that is the love of God that in spite of our sin, in spite of our transgressions, in spite of our, of our mistakes, God sent forth his son Jesus Christ to die for us at Calvary's cross. He sent Jesus to stand in our place. Hallelujah. So verse 9 says, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So the blood of Jesus has brought us our justification. We've been justified by the blood of Jesus. In other words, just if I would not sinned. That's what justified means. It means that there's no remembrance and there's no record of the transgression because that's what sin is. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But praise God, friends, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. For if when we were enemies, verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So the death of Jesus Christ has brought us reconciliation with God and his life has brought us salvation because there's life in the blood. The Bible in the book of Leviticus tells us that the life of all flesh is in the blood. So because of the blood of Jesus, we have life. We have the life of God now. In other words, we have life the way God has life. We have life as God intended for us to have life. Because the enemy, when he um, deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, when he deceived Eve, um, we find that man lost his positioning with God. Because man was originally uh, created to have fellowship and have communion with God. And that was the main purpose 
of the creation of man. And I, I, I just get this, you know, to, uh, to, to memory that when uh, the angels fell, God did not save the angels. But when man fell, God saved man. So in all the world, the, the, the earth belongs to the Lord. Everything on the earth belongs to the Lord. It's, it is all God's property. So God could have chosen, uh, uh, um, like I mentioned, the angels. God created the angels. And we find that when the angels fell, when they, when they rebelled against God, God did not save the angels. When you see outside and you look at the plants and you look at the trees and the beautiful flowers, when they wither away, you know, and you look at it, sometimes we look and we say, oh, but this thing has withered. So God could have also looked at it and said, my, you know, this plant has withered. You know, I want to save this plant. But God did not save the plants. But God saved humanity. He saved man. He saved you and I through Jesus Christ, his son. Verse 11 says, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So reconciliation is now, it is for the now. When you are reconciled to God, you are made one with God. And you are back into your positioning of having communion with God. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men for all sin. So through one man, through Adam, Adam became the door. Adam's transgression was the door for sin to enter. And when sin entered, sin became the door for death to enter. Prior to the fall of man, prior to the transgression, um, God commanded man and he said in uh, Genesis chapter 2, he says, you shall eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. So prior to man eating of that tree, there's no record of fear. There's no record of shame or guilt. We only find that after man ate of that tree, because as soon as Eve ate and she gave to Adam and the both of them had eaten, after they both eaten, we find that now the, then they became exposed. So that's what sin does. It exposes you. It, it, it takes you out of covering. So they were uncovered. And they realized that they were uncovered. So they, there is shame that entered. Humiliation entered. Guilt entered. Fear entered. And hence we find they went to look for leaves to cover themselves. But God knew that he had a divine plan and purpose with man. Because when God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden, the first sacrifices made mention of there, where God clothed them with animal skin. So God sacrificed that first animal to cover them. But now we have the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ who has become our Passover lamb, that we pass over from sin to life. We pass over from sin to righteousness, from death to life. Hallelujah. From sickness to our health. Because that is what God has for us, is a healthy life. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 to 22 says, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Hallelujah. So when Adam allowed, when, when Adam sinned and he allowed uh, uh, sin to enter and death to enter, we find now that Humanity as a whole, throughout the world, people are afraid, people are anxious. 
uh, fine people are, you know, they are sick and they've got diseases and infirmities. But the Bible says he himself, Jesus Christ himself, bore our sicknesses. He bore our infirmities. That's Isaiah 53. And by his stripes we were healed. We are healed by the stripes that Jesus endured on the cross. To put it this way, if you can think of a sickness, for example, cancer. Cancer is a sickness. Cancer is of the curse. So the stripes of Jesus, he striped it. He eradicated it. He removed it. Hallelujah. By his stripes, we were healed. You got your healing back. You got your life back. Healing is the children's bread. You do not need to be ashamed anymore. You do not need to be humiliated anymore. You do not need to live a sorrowful life anymore. You don't need to be living a life in sickness and disease anymore. You don't have to live a life of poverty anymore because Jesus paid the price for all of that. It was all included in the testimony, in the testament, the covenant we have through his blood. His blood has given us justification. We've been justified by his blood. We've been redeemed by his blood. We've been washed in his blood. In other words, there is no record of sin or transgression in our lives anymore. The Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty may be made rich. Praise God. Hallelujah. We live now in, in a life of the abundance of God's grace, God's love, and God's goodness. Amen. You know, I'm just going to close quickly. Just a thought now as uh, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, we find that when they had brought her to Jesus, they commanded, they, they even said, Moses commanded that such should be stoned because the penalty is dead. The penalty is dead. So they were witnesses. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. They knew the law very, very well. So they bring this woman to Jesus and they say, we witnessed, we witnessed her. We caught her in the act of adultery. But Jesus does not hold her sin or transgression against her. You find the Bible says, he kept quiet and he wrote on the ground. And then Jesus stood up and he said, let he who is without sin, let him be the first one to cast the first stone. The Bible says one by one, they dropped their stones and they walked off. And then Jesus looked at the woman and he said, woman, daughter, where are your accusers now? So you see that? They were witnesses. So having been justified by Jesus, the witnesses all of a sudden become accusers now. <laughs> In other words, there's no, there's no record of that wrong. And Jesus tells her to go and sin no more. Many accounts in scripture you find when Jesus healed the sick, he told them, go and sin no more because sin becomes a doorway for sickness to enter. Hallelujah. That's what sin does. But the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus sets us free. We are acquitted of all transgression. Praise God. And the blood of, the blood of Jesus brings us back into fellowship with God. Brings us reconciliation with God. Thirdly, the blood, the blood of Jesus gives us protection. That means whatever is happening around the world will not necessarily happen to you and I as believers in Christ Jesus because His blood is a sign. His blood is our covenant with God. And God is a God who keeps covenant. Praise God. And lastly, through His blood, we have a sense of belonging. He's brought us into the family of God we now belong to God. We are now children of God. We have the DNA of God. And we have the life of God because of His blood. Every time you read the Word of God, you find it's the washing water by the Word of God. You begin to start thinking the thoughts of God. You begin to see things the way God sees things. You begin to do things the way God would do things. Because this is the covenant that God has made with us through Jesus Christ, His Son, through His blood. When we read the Word of God, we see the righteousness of God. We see Jesus and we see ourselves in the context of the Scriptures and not in the context of our circumstances 
and not in the context of what's happening around us, but purely in the context of Scripture, where you're able to say, I am what I am, but purely by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So this morning, being Good Friday, we'd like to just share the table of the Lord. Amen. So we remember on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of this. This is my body, which is broken for you. So he gave it to his disciples and they ate. And when supper was ended, he took the cup and after he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for the remission of the sins of the world. Do this in remembrance of me. So to put it another way, today is a day of remembrance where we remember the price that was paid for us. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, we thank you for the bread that we break, O Lord, that it, O Lord God, becomes for us, Lord God, the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the cup of drink that we bless and drink. It becomes for us, O Lord God, the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, which has washed us and cleansed us of all sin, all unrighteousness and all iniquity. In Jesus' blessed name, we thank you, O God. Amen. Let us eat the bread of life. Let us celebrate the victory that Christ has purchased for us, an eternal victory through his blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you right now. I think just before we close, I'd like to give you an opportunity. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus in your life and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, or perhaps you once walked with the Lord and you missed a mark somewhere, you know, God it's not a God who holds anger. That's why whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And you are you saying, I want to make things right with God. Today is a great day. Today is a great day to begin. It's a great day to be reconciled and come back to God. Come back to your first love. Hallelujah. And uh, the Bible tells us that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So there's power in confession. So you're going to just confess with your mouth now and you're going to believe in your heart by faith this morning and receive the Lord Jesus, receive eternal life, receive your justification. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for my brother, my sister, who are watching right now, this telecast. I thank you for the door that you have made available for us to enter, Lord God, your kingdom. And that door is Jesus Christ, your son. So dear brother, dear sister, let us say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And right now I confess the Lord Jesus as being my personal Lord and Savior. And I believe in all of my heart that God raised him from the dead. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that from this moment on, you are my Lord, my King, and my Savior. Thank you for your blood. I thank you for eternal life. And I thank you, O Lord Jesus, for standing in my place. In your blessed name, I praise you for eternal life. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, if you pray that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'd like to encourage you. The details will be showing up on the screen after this telecast. Please send us... Uh, 
send us your details, send us a WhatsApp, send us an email. We'd like to connect with you and we'd like to bless you with a love gift. And I would encourage you to find a good spirit-filled church uh, where they preach the word of God, where they stand on the word of God, where they stand in faith and, uh, you know, connect with the church so that you can develop your faith and you can grow in this new walk of your faith now in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to wish you a very happy Easter from myself and from our family here at FCI Raymond Newcastle. And we continue to pray for you. We love you very much. And we pray God's richest blessings in Christ Jesus be bestowed upon you in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Praise God.